In April 2021, Rami Ashour released a solo drill challenge on his Instagram account. Now, don't worry if you haven't seen it, I'll show you in a moment. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the drill. I'm going to break it down into smaller parts and I'm going to show you some progressions that you can work through. However, after having watched this video, I do not guarantee that you'll be able to do the drill because it is difficult. It's not as difficult as a figure of 16, which is a figure of eight on the front wall, and then you turn and you do another figure of eight on the back wall, and then you turn and you do a figure of eight on the front wall, and so on. But that is a video for another day. Now, I call these types of drills NDRs, non-direct relevance because none of the shots that you play in these types of drills will ever be played in a real match but the ability to consistently control the ball is always worth developing and of course they can be fun now i've always got my three reminders which is number one heat up properly you should be sweating before you even hit the ball number two wear your goggles if you don't wear goggles i highly recommend getting them now if you're watching this during the pandemic and like me you actually have to wear a mask when you're on court you could try some surgical tape and number three use the right ball now don't use a double yellow dot just because the more advanced players do use the ball that's most suitable for you in fact in this video I'm only going to be using the red dot and I'm not going to be thinking about another ball until I can do the drill properly now for this drill I will be using the Ashaway 110 SL which is currently my favorite racket a link to the full review is in the text description there is a poster available which will guide you through the progressions because watching the video you'll probably forget I certainly would and a link to that is available in the text description so that's it let's start by watching Rami do the drill in a moment I'll break the drill down into individual shots, but for now, just enjoy the seemingly effortless brilliance. Wearing a cap and jeans is not part of the drill, it just adds to the casualness. Rami completes 52 shots with no mistakes. So let's isolate the individual shots of this drill so you can see what's happening. The first shot is a backhand to the front wall. It is then hit at the back wall before it bounces. When it comes back off the back wall, a backhand is hit at the side wall. It travels across the court and hits the other side wall, coming back to the player, who then hits a forehand to the front wall. It is then hit at the back wall before it bounces, when it comes back off the back wall, this time a forehand is hit at the side wall. It travels across the court and hits the other side wall, coming back to the player, who then hits a backhand to the front wall, and we are back to the beginning. That's the theory. Although Rami did hit a forehand where he should have hit a backhand in a very neat piece of adaptation. Here are all the shots overlaid on the court. Now you can see why I'm calling it the Rami H. Before we start on the progressions, here are seven lucky tips. Number one, don't expect to be able to do this drill the first time you try. You almost certainly won't be able to. Number two, don't expect to work through all the progressions in one court visit. You may need a few sessions until you reach number 13. Number three, when you can perform a progression easily, move on to the next one. Number four, don't spend more than about five minutes on each progression. Number five, not everybody will need or want to perform the progressions in the numbered order, but I recommend you do at least for the first time. Number six, feel free to retry the full drill at any time. You never know, you might be able to do it now. And number seven, feel free to go back to a previous progression at any time. They're all great practices. 
Okay, it's time to explain the 13 unlucky progressions. Number one, visualization. I know you won't do it, but you should. Visualization is simply imagining yourself playing the drill in your head. The more realistic you can make the visualization, the more benefit it is. Number two, visualization with swings. Again, I know you probably won't do it, but you should. This time, you're actually moving around and pretending to hit the ball by swinging, but of course there's no ball, and you're doing it in your head, in your mind's eye, at the same time. Number three, the full drill. Try it. You probably won't be able to do it, but a dose of reality will help you focus your mind. The first time I tried, I actually hit the ball out of court. The next few times were a disaster too. Number four, try it on the bounce. Ah, much easier, right? Well, it's still not easy the first few times you try it, but doing the bounce version is definitely much easier. This will accustom you to hitting the shot in the right place at the right time. Because as I mentioned before, with these NDR, non-direct relevance drills, it can be quite easy to forget what you're supposed to do. In fact, later on, I do forget what I'm supposed to do. So this process will help you become just more accustomed with where you're supposed to hit it. Number five, modified side-to-side -side bounce. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I heavily promote the side-to-side. -side. But this is different. You're not hitting at the side wall and then it going across. What you're doing is you're hitting it in the same direction that it's moving. Now, you're doing this on the bounce. Number six, modified side-to-side. -side. One volley, one bounce. So you can see that I'm hitting the forehand volley and then the backhand is a bounce. And then I will need to practice a few of those and then I'll need to swap sides. I'll need to do the backhand volley with the forehand bounce. Number seven, the modified side to side, but this time it's volley only. Now you don't actually need to do this in the routine but the timing of being able to hit the ball in the same direction that it's moving is very, very valuable for this routine. Hopefully I make it look quite easy, but actually it's not that easy. I suspect this will be the first point that people will begin to struggle. Number seven, front wall to back wall on the bounce. This is essentially as the same as number five, where you're letting the ball bounce, but you're hitting it in the same direction that it's coming. It's not particularly difficult, but because you're now going front wall to back wall, that can add some uh, complexity. Also, depending on whether you're using a glass wall, as I am, or whether you're using a solid wall, when the ball comes off the glass wall, sometimes it's easier to lose sight of it or to not be as focused on that ball. Number nine, front wall to back wall, but one volley and one bounce. So as you can see here, I'm doing the backhand on the volley and then I'm hitting the forehand on the bounce. Backhand on the volley, hitting the forehand on the bounce. You will need to swap sides because you need to become accustomed with the correct direction. So in this case, you'll be hitting the forehand on the volley and the backhand on the bounce. Number 10, front wall to back wall, volley only. Boy, this is tough. I struggle to do this exercise, but it is a very valuable one because you will be volleying the ball when it's coming from the front wall. And it's excellent practice. Although you won't have to be hitting it both ways, it is still very good practice. I suspect that many people will have to stop here for a while and keep practicing this one before they can move on. Number 11, volley off the side wall catch it, hit to the other side wall. So what you do here is you hit it off one side wall, it goes across the court, hits the other side wall, and then you volley it towards the front wall. When it comes back to you, you catch it. So you hit a forehand off the side wall, it goes to the other side wall, you hit a backhand straight drive, when it comes back, you catch it. 
and you just go from side to side. I tried to develop a progression where after you've hit it straight, you hit it off the side wall again, but that actually was really difficult and I didn't want to add another level of complexity. So even though it breaks the flow by catching it and then hitting it again, it's still a valuable exercise. Number 12, the full drill on the bounce with some volleys. So you, I know you've already done the, the drill on the bounce, but now you're going to introduce some volleys. Now you can choose one volley that you do all of the time, or you can just see whether you can volley particular shots. It doesn't really matter. If there's one volley that you're weaker on, that perhaps should be the one that you practice in this drill. But if you want to do the ones that you're good at too, that's okay. Uh, you might want to spend more than five minutes on this one because with not knowing which volley you're going to hit, uh, you can get more benefit from doing it for a bit longer. Number 13, full drill volley only. Yay, well done. The PSA tour awaits. Well, maybe not, but congratulations for getting this far. You now have to do the drill on the volley. Now I know you did it in step three where you tried, but now you have to make a concerted effort. You have to keep going even if you make mistakes. You could do this one for a lot longer than five minutes, but I find that the frustration level just gets higher and higher. It gets to a point where the longer you spend practicing, you don't noticeably get better. You're better to do it on another day. I recommend that if the ball bounce, bounces, you stop and start again. But if you want to continue, which is essentially like number number 12, that's fine too. But I like the idea of if it bounces, you stop because it's the mentality of focused only on volleys. Okay, so you're probably wondering how many I did. Well, I actually managed to do 44. I was quite happy with that. Uh, the footage of me doing 44 is not very smooth because I actually changed the camera settings trying to get a thumbnail image and I happened to do 44. But uh, I did plenty of others in the 40s, so here's one of those. And um, I definitely will keep going with this. I want to reach 100. I think that a lot of very good players will easily be able to get more than Rami, and I don't mean that in any disrespectful way, because Rami probably just said, okay, let me just try it, and he did it. I have no doubt that if he focused 10 minutes of his training every day, he would get up to 100 very, very quickly. But for me, I think 100 will be really difficult, But and I, I really enjoyed doing it, so I want to keep, keep doing it. Don't set yourself a goal unless you really want to. Don't feel that you have to, you know, set yourself any particular number. 52 would be great because at least you could sort of say, well, I beat Rami's score. Um, but as I said, you choose what number you want it to be. Okay, so I'm recording this outro before I've even done it. Hopefully, I've managed to do something similar to what Rami did. But more importantly, I hope that I've given you some tips and some ideas on actually being able to do it yourself. If nothing else, I hope you had a bit of fun watching me really try and probably fail. And remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.